Good afternoon, everyone. It's so good to see you. Welcome back to Adobe Live, where you can tune in for all of your creative inspiration. As you know, we have guests from different creative fields each day, and today is day two of two in our UI UX live stream. So once again, I've got Chimmy Callow here for two hours, and I'm your host, Andrea Eppy. and welcome to everyone in the chat. Starting to see some of you guys pop up over there. Lots of you guys. Cody Bear is like spamming the chat. Not spamming, but welcome. We've got Jay, Raphael, Paul, Julia, lots of familiar faces. Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. All right. So we have a very full day planned. So I'm going to go ahead and take a look at our schedule. So uh, right here, we're going to be live for two hours. So 12 to 2. And then right after this, we've got uh, our XD Daily Creative Challenge with Howard Pinsky, and that'll be 30 minutes from 2 to 2.30. And the very last stream of the day will be Design in the Dark with Julia McNamara and Andrew Hockrattle, and that will be at 2.30. So very, very fun day, lots of fun streams. Um, so I do want to mention today we're going to be doing or we'll be reviewing the XD Daily Creative Challenge submissions that you guys have been working on. So that will be at the end of this stream. So be sure to stay tuned for that. Um, today's challenge is to design an interactive chat for a finance mobile app. And we're going to get into that a little bit later, but you can find all the details for that just right above the uh, chat. And this is the Discord link to our XD Discord. You can join that to chat with the design community, um, get some feedback on your work. So definitely be sure to sign up there. So let us know where you're from in the chat. We'll be checking that throughout the stream today. So if you have any questions, feel free to just ask away. And now I will go ahead and hand it over to you, Chimmy. Um, once again, this is our second day here. So she's gonna be continuing on her bike app that she was working on yesterday. And I'll go ahead and let her introduce herself for those of you that missed yesterday's stream. And she'll kind of talk about what she's gonna be doing during these uh, two hours. Um, hello, it is evening for me, but good afternoon. Oh, I said afternoon, yes. <laughs> evening for you in, in the world. <laughs> yeah. um, my name's Chimmy and I'm a senior product designer at Condé, at Wildwomen at the moment. I've also worked at Condé Nast International and British Airways recently. I work on responsive web as well as native mobile apps. Yesterday, I did sort of an introduction to XD using some conceptual wireframes of my cycling app. And I also added some basic interaction. Today I'll be adding a bit more functionality, improving the UI and showing off a few more features of XD uh, prototyping that I didn't fit in yesterday. Um, in terms of why cycling, I recently bought a bike and I did not find a lot of the cycling websites to my taste. <laughs> <laughs> A summary of where we got to yesterday. So we created a splash screen, a home screen, um, a shop screen, sort of with the bikes, um, bike types, and um, sort of a landing page for a category of bike, which is hybrid bikes. What I did um, before today was do some of the fiddly bits that would probably be incredibly <laughs> boring to show you all. Um, Although if anyone has any questions about, about how I achieved something, I will be very happy to go over it again. So um, what I'm going to do today is just sort of carry on with what we did yesterday, mm -hmm. but I will use, I will be creating a couple of screens so that those people that are not as familiar with XD that join today will know how to do some of those basic things that we covered yesterday. Right, awesome. so <laughs> since yesterday, <laughs> we have found ah, my I love that logo. Icon That's and so fun. Created a faux logo called Hipster Bikes. <laughs> um, and what I'm going to do now is show you a little trick. So, visual design is not my core strength. The, <laughs> the structure and the flow of things is probably where I'm most comfortable. Mm. So, I've had to discover like little hacks and tricks to do things. Um, mm -hmm. Other people seem to work in RGB and know how to manipulate hue and all sorts of things. I have a neat little trick for, I work with mostly sort of 
blacks and whites and the occasional pop of color. Mm -hmm. So if I want to get a black that's complementary to my palette, I use, so this is my um, main color, my, mm -hmm. my accent color, and I've just put a black fill and I adjust the transparency. Mm. And what I do is pick out that color with my eyedropper. And what it does is that it gives me, it's only very subtle, but it gives me blacks ah. that sit very nicely mm -hmm. with the color palette that I've chosen. Kind of or in the that primary same, color. the same tone as the So blues. yeah, I'm sure it will be the same hue or something, but yeah. since I don't know how to manipulate <laughs> that myself, this is a nice little hack yeah. that I found for. So you can see that where this black here is a bit stark, sure. that one blends a little bit more with the yes, color. So definitely. that's my little trick. And once I've Love done that. that, because I don't want to have to keep dropping, I'm going to go to my assets and create some color styles. So this is my 80% black, for example. Um, so I can pick that off anytime um yes i'm all about the hats yeah um obviously <laughs> right off the I bat can. too <laughs> <laughs> right it. off the bat yeah so that's one thing i feel like my and what's that font i, I really like that for hipster bikes so this is currently helvetica but mm -hmm. actually there was oh this one oh yeah, this yeah, is yeah. the lakeside like so lakeside is oh, lakeside. a, a nice decorative um font that i use sometimes mm -hmm. um i was going to change this to something else i think it was anyway we'll get back we'll get to we'll get back to typography in a minute but sure. i was playing around with the typography so that's kind of cool with the yeah. with the and what was your inspiration for the logo with the little mustache? And are the eyes supposed to be like wheels or something like uh, symbolic like that? Or am I just reading too much into it? <laughs> I, I love the inter interpretation, but really <laughs> what happened was I have a noun project subscription. And so mm -hmm. I go in there when I'm looking for icons, I mm -hmm. just had hipster because I there knew that I was going to go with hipster. Back. Yeah. And this came up and I loved it. And <laughs> now we see that it looks like bike wheels so yeah that makes me happy um, you planned it all along though right like <laughs> um i will go around and change all my colors eventually mm -hmm. so oh no hold on okay um eventually but for now sure. i want to do something else that i love doing so i love a rounded corner i love a little bit of a gradient so I'm going to change my primary button. So for those that weren't here yesterday, I've created some components. So this is my primary button, which I use a few times. I'm going to style this once and it should style everywhere. If you want to make sure that you're editing the main component, you can just sort of use the shortcut or mm. right click and select edit the yeah. main component um, to make sure that that's what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And while I'm in there, I'm going to select my shape and then change my fill to a linear gradient. And I will just spin this around a little bit because I prefer the right to left to right mm -hmm. treatment instead. And I don't know what the blue on the end is, but it kind of looks cool. Yeah, I kind of like it. So we've got a little bit more character mm -hmm. um, to this page at the moment. Um, we'll prototype as we go. Sure. Um, so something that's, I want to point out, but I kind of did a little bit earlier, but I can show you how to do it again, is creating a hover state. So let me delete that. So I've selected the component. I know it because I've got the green here and I've got the default state selected here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to add, so you get a hover state out of the box. You don't need to do anything except specify what happens when you hover and XD will take care of the animation for that. So what I'm doing is going to change it back to a solid um, a solid color and I've edited the wrong layer. So 
let's make sure I get. I feel like I do that all the time. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, oh, Um, got to double click in there. Yes. Nice. Now we've got it and we can do a quick little test. Now, wherever else I've got that it fills. And all the your <laughs> images and your file. Out what's yeah. screenshot X, 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 Y. Um, well, also, I feel like that's good for even just like a lot of times I'll want to go back after much work to dig through all these files. So <laughs> I don't end up doing it. But that's nice in your case that if you just do it right the first time, then for case studies and stuff, you already have everything organized. So it's not like this monumental task anymore. <laughs> Exactly. So I try to be a little bit, it's not always mm-hmm. um, easy, but I try, I do try. Yeah. Um, so I've just added my hero image. So you mm-hmm. saw that it was quite easy. I just dragged the image onto the page um, and I will just add another one, which I prepared to, I think, workshop. And these are just sort of editorial pieces of content that mm-hmm. you can put um, a bit of text over. Um, and where do you usually get time. your um, images from? Like, So I got the bike um, images off of a shop, shopping mm-hmm. website, nice. um, Evans, mm-hmm. um, as much as I could. And then everything else that I use that isn't a, shop, a, a bike, I get off on Splash. Mm, yeah, I love on Splash. Um, yeah, on Splash has like really lovely mm-hmm. imagery. Because I was being very specific about my stock, I couldn't mm. rely um, <laughs> completely on Adobe stock yeah. images. Right, so the homepage looks quite designed. Mm-hmm. Um, something I'd like to show, yesterday we had a little bit of um, interesting behavior <laughs> from my meta yeah, components. Mm-hmm. So I've split it out into a bunch of components. So let's look at my layer list so you can see what's mm-hmm. happening. So I have my nav bar component, which okay. has a few different states. So I have a shop state, something in cart and cart. And um, so this, this is the default state over here. Mm-hmm. And this is going to be the shop state. So you can Ooh, see lovely. that that has the right state. And this one also should be the shop state. And what I did in the end was I had to make each of these individual elements Mm -hmm. its own component. And then each of those components has a default and a selected state. Ah, so there's two different states within the nav. I see. Exactly. I stack the states. um, So you can do these sort of quite clever things by Mm -hmm. building up your components and building up the states to form quite nice interactions. So we'll see what that. that looks like in when we start sort of testing Mm -hmm. our prototype now this is something that in fact let's do a quick test now so that we can see how far we've gone with the prototyping sure so at the moment my Mm -hmm. splash screen doesn't have any trigger Mm -hmm. so we'll just delve into the prototype mode and you can see that it's in the top left next to design i've just selected that let's move this out of the way if i've selected the whole um, screen which you can see because it's all blue with the one single um, trigger point i can add an interaction and i can select time so this is my splash screen this is a sort mm-hmm. of screen that people would add animation to and it quickly transitions to the next screen and it's kind of the equivalent of your brand moment Mm -hmm. on a website with the logo that you have so that's an opportunity for people to see the logo because you'll see in the rest of the app there is no use of the logo really um i've chosen an auto animate and i'm going to set the destination to home high fidelity so that's done i've set the time to one second just because yesterday i noticed that when i played the first time you couldn't see because it was so fast mm, at 0.2 right. seconds. So I'm going to just change that. The other thing that we want to do is to set this. So there's a hover state, um, but I can also do a tap. So my mm-hmm. tap is leading to the 
So here I'm going to do a transition. So a transition makes it sort of treat it like a transition. I'm going to choose what happens with my animation, whereas mm -hmm. auto animate, you're giving over control to XD to choose what makes the most sense. So we will send it here to shop. And I'm going to choose, I think yesterday we did a push. Oh, I think left. it went up to the low fidelity shop. I'm seeing oh. the arrow go all the way up. <laughs> this is why Friggin. I name my artboards people. Yeah. So <laughs> shop Hi-Fi right. is the right one. So that's a push left. Um, so let's test those few things. Mm -hmm. Now at the beginning, I had a different thing as my home. So I've just set my home for my prototype to that. So that when I press play now, we get this image and you saw that quick transition. I didn't have to do anything. Didn't and tap we see anything, yeah. A nice little hover Ooh, came free out lovely. of the box. And people will know that they're hovering for sure. I mean, obviously in an app really, you wouldn't have a hover state. I'm just doing this um, yeah. <laughs> to show you the features. Um, and if we choose shop, then we have that nice little... Ooh, I love that slide. That looks yeah, good. Yeah, that's, that's a nice little slide. But the thing I wanted to show you is that at the moment, I can't do any scrolling. I can't see the rest of the images that are on this screen. So there are eight mm -hmm. images, and at least two of them are hidden by the navigation bar. So what are we going to do about it? We'll go back to our design, and I'm going to introduce you to scroll groups. So I've selected all of these um, options, um, which are a repeat grid. And mm -hmm. you know they're a repeat grid because it says repeat grid here. And I have the option to ungroup the grid where it would normally say repeat grid in the properties page. I will now set my scroll to a vertical scroll. So right beneath the sizing properties, you have the option to do a horizontal, a vertical, or both. So vertical clearly makes sense. And you get these handles mm -hmm. on the edges. And I'm going to just pull those in a little bit so that I control my scroll area. And what's that, what that's saying is that any content within my repeat grid will scroll in this space. Mm -hmm. so it's and I like different. that for shop, um, yesterday you had all the uh, like adventure, BMX, all the descriptions of the bike sort yes. of like centered on top of the image but i'm guessing or maybe you want to describe a little why you chose at the bottom instead so we can see that when i did the treatment yesterday mm -hmm. we started to lose some of the text so you can't see the, yeah. the mountain and the road and if you're choosing to design this way you have to be sure that you have very tight control over the images that will sit below your mm -hmm. text or you have to do things like add overlays onto Right, but the images the... are so cool. So you like hate to make them darker, kind exactly. of. Exactly. So it's a choice. So yeah. I, I've, I've, I've chosen to showcase mm -hmm. the imagery by just moving that text to a, like that. a small section below it. Um, and let's quickly test our scroll group. So I like to do like iterative testing so that if things mm -hmm. go awry, I know at which point I lost the plot. And here we go. Look at that. Nice. And we, we could probably add a scroll group to discover too, since it's basically the same idea with yes. uh, scrolling through the images. Exactly. So I would do that if I actually did something with this. Mm -hmm. So for people that don't know how to create a repeat grid, let's use this as an example. So you can use multiple components or multiple objects, as in this case, in this repeat grid, I have, oh, now it's a scroll group. Hold on, let's go to this one. Here I have in repeat grid two, I have three objects in that scroll group, but you can just do a simple, a single one. So I just have this one image here. I'm going to do a quick repeat grid and I will drag that out for as long as I want. And what we have is if I then make that its own scroll group, actually, do you know what? Let's do a horizontal instead because then you get to see yeah, it'd be a pretty small thing. scroll for just the bottom <laughs> yeah, if it so was vertical. Let's imagine that these are like mm -hmm. items of the day or something. Sure. So I've got the peak grid there mm -hmm. and I'm just going to set that as a horizontal scroll group and just make the 
score area exactly the width of one image. So have a nice Ooh, looks little... nice. And for those people that haven't know, found out my little trick, let's do a little bit of a image drop. So I have a few more images some here somewhere. Let's get these ones into the grid so that we have a little bit of variety in Lovely. our imagery. Super fast. <laughs> really, really <laughs> fast design. Look at this. Ah, looks got... great a pretty snazzy looking mm -hmm. hipster. Um, <laughs> now I'd like to get feedback on whether this product feels hipster to people. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, actually Raphael in the chat asked a question sort of about the audience. Um, he said, when you get information on who the audience is for a project, how do you apply it? For example, if the audience is younger or maybe the audience is rich, etc. So like, here you're assuming the audience is hipsters um or at least is hipster adjacent yeah <laughs> <laughs> but so. he's asking like how would you apply it or how would you go about it do you feel like it's mostly visuals um or is there other things that you'll do like in the actual layout in the ui so i i would consider the audience in the entire experience mm -hmm. right because everything from the logo to the copy, micro copy, and um, layout choices mm -hmm. should all That's be. That's true. The copy too, like the way yeah. you talk to the audience. So this brand is sort of a friendly mm -hmm. brand that's targeting. Well, let's use millennials for want of a better sure. description. Um, so buy bikes as easily as we ride because we know that. Again, I'm just going to use some equities here. Millennials mm -hmm. like convenience, so that's mm -hmm. going to appeal to a sure. millennial. The blue, I said yesterday, um, elicits trust. So blue is a nice mm -hmm. trusting or color that in elicits trust. But I've used sort of a royal blue, which is more modern, more yeah. vibrant, and in keeping with that fun, friendly nature. Mm -hmm. I added some curves, again, because... If I were designing a very serious business app for corporates, <laughs> then I would have like really hard edges because that yeah. just says we're very serious, right? <laughs> very, very serious. <laughs> 90 degree <laughs> angles, serious, <laughs> ties, <laughs> Wall Street, very serious. <laughs> but when you, the, the friendly- I'm going to think about that now when I make squares, <laughs> just anytime. <laughs> like honestly, yeah. the, the level of um, curve I add mm -hmm. to the design Mm. is a reflection of how how much friendliness right so pills are very popular and i think that pills are just like oh that's like the other spectrum like we are so like people. childish just so, almost like <laughs> so fun yeah so i <laughs> want a little bit of edge here like sure. we won't steal your money we'll still take it seriously but hey have fun shopping right while you're doing that so i hope that um i love that <laughs> Now um, let's add a few interactions to mm -hmm. our nav bar. So obviously when someone's on the home screen, we want that to be reflected, but when they go to the shop, we want that to be reflected as well. So we'll just add a little bit of um, uh, an interaction to this mm -hmm. piece here. So I'm just going to now here we have to be a little bit specific. So sure. I want to be able to click, click the shop specifically. And when that shop is tapped, then we go over there. So you can just drag the trigger over there. Mm -hmm. And I have a tap and my action, I'm going to choose a transition still because when shop now is clicked, it goes to the same screen. So you can't have conflicting sure. interactions for the, the, mm -hmm. the customer so it's it's already populated the same thing so shop high five push left and i'll go over to this other screen and select the home because i want to go back the other way i'm just going to drag that here and switch this to push right now let's hope that i've got those directions correct mm -hmm. I think testing. that's right. 
I really don't know where to put this um, thing. Let's try it. Oh, I can't bit. actually see. Oh, you can't? No. Interesting. I can see like when you do the little preview play thing, but if it's like a finder window, I can't. Oh, it's the zoom window. Yeah, yes. don't worry about that because I can't see it. <laughs> okay, so um, yes, play. let's have a click. So shop, and you can see home, mm -hmm. and shop pushes the other nice. way. So really nice. Yesterday yeah. it didn't work because I hadn't got the states mm, set. Correctly. Right, right. And that's that's not correct. So building up, how are we feeling about the I think it the looks vibe? Great. Yeah. Vibes. Very millennial. <laughs> Love it. Not too serious, not too playful. This is a random um, question from me actually. How do you feel about animations in like the splash screen in general? Do you feel like it's too much? generally like it takes away from just getting into the app or do you think it's like a fun sort of welcome so or think, maybe do you think it depends on the audience i think it depends on the audience mm. you know sort of i've given examples of the very serious banking app or yeah. whatever <laughs> um you probably don't want to spend too much time animating because there's mm -hmm. probably very very busy banking types <laughs> that want to use this very serious app right <laughs> But if you have something playful, then um, we, we looked at that um, portfolio yesterday and I thought that the use of animation was quite appropriate mm -hmm. for the target. So if you're doing something yeah. quite dry, like looking at fuel prices, right. um, bring a little bit of delight with mm -hmm. an unexpected micro interaction so is true. something I'm a fan of. Yeah. Um, from an accessibility perspective, of course, you shouldn't sort of do it too much. And yeah. if you can, make sure that you give control to the user so that they can turn it off mm, if okay. it affects them negatively mm. in yeah. any way. Um, so that's something I like to build into my use of animation. Um, the other thing to note is that animation should be helpful, but not the only mm -hmm. way to communicate state. Right. So right. having an animation here doesn't really matter because they're going to go to the next thing automatically. Yeah. But if the only way you could see that something had happened was with some sort of tiny interact you know, animation somewhere, mm -hmm. uh, that might not really work for yeah. all of your users. Hmm. Um, so what did I have for here? Bikes. And I have... And while she's finding those bikes, I just want to remind everyone about the XD Daily Creative Challenges. Those are going on uh, last week and this week, and I believe today is day six. So at the end of today's stream, we're going to be looking at some of you guys' submissions. So be sure to um, head on over to behance.net slash challenge slash XD, and you can feel free to join the XD Discord as well. Um, for some daily feedback and just to chat with the design community. So be sure to get your submissions in because we'll review those at the end of the stream. Oh, this makes me want to go design. bike shopping. Like now I feel like <laughs> I, need, I need a bike ASAP. Um, <laughs> you should. <laughs> It's quite nice. Um, yeah. So I don't know if you all observed, but the shape is treated effectively like a mask by mm -hmm. XD. So it just kind of like fits it. But obviously my bike dimensions are a bit different to the shape that I've chosen. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to change the size of one of them to fit the space a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, why didn't that change everything? Hmm. Maybe if you change the repeat grid size of just uh, like all of the boxes. So you might have to create a new set of repeat oh, grids and just make them rectangular. Oh, okay. Maybe that'll work. This kind of works, maybe. <laughs> But you know what? Let's let's keep it like this for for now. We'll we'll make it okay. look nicer in a, a wee bit. So that's this page. Now, what we want to happen with this page is mm -hmm. just make it another scroll group. We'll work with the content in a moment. Actually, hold on. 
maybe what's happened have i on is that i have got responsive resize to auto mm. so let's see what happens if i take that away mm, nope I think I ought to have. I ought to have set the size before I did the repeat grid, mm. so it will. Yeah, it will, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, it will. It will be sorted in a moment. Let's let's carry on with. Luckily, we can separate out style from content. Mm -hmm. So as long, as long as I know that the general interaction works, I can go yeah. back and fix the style. Um, I sometimes fly by the seat of my pants, and I'll sort of be <laughs> tweaking my prototype yeah. as testing is happening. <laughs> um, <laughs> wow! I do not testing. recommend that. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. That is by the seat of your pants. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I, I I figure out something's gone wrong. I'm like oh uh oh, it's done before they get to that screen. Um, oh, that's funny. Where am I? Where am I? Uh, scroll group. Okay, yes. And let's set that to roughly the same point. So that's around twenty four pixels to the end. Um, so what we need now is mm -hmm. an overlay. So I want to be able to filter and when i get that filter mm -hmm. that it shows some stuff so i've set up the base of my filter here and mm -hmm. um, it's just a component with a title some choices and a couple of tick boxes sure. um, so i'm just going to create a new artboard now this is for anyone who has never used xd before we can go here, so this little sort of, I don't know what it looks like, but it's an artboard, or we can <laughs> use A to create mm -hmm. a new artboard. I've been working on iPhone Xs. I've used the V to go back to my move. Yeah, um, what's, um, I feel like that's a question I get a lot. What artboard do you usually start with? Just like, a clean slate, what's your go-to? Do you start with like something that's super small or just whatever you personally are using or what's your uh, method? So because I'm obsessed with the preciseness of my numbers, mm -hmm. I tend to either use the XR, which mm -hmm. is 4 pixels, width, okay. or the X, which is 375. I also mm -hmm. use those two because they have the notches and I have a phone with a notch so I can check Gotcha. on my phone what right. blasters might happen if i don't consider that not obviously i also will just use um a, a library or a ui kit mm -hmm. um but sometimes i just like coming up with a blank outboard and playing with yeah. that so it is helpful having a phone with the notch because you can see it like in real time what it looks like Yes, that, it's well, so that helpful space there. <laughs> because sometimes I forget. I forget, mm -hmm. um, and then I'm thinking, "Oh no, why does that look really weird?" <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> so, and a lot of times, actually, I'll just like have my phone next to me connected to XD, just like um, in real time, showing me exactly what I'm designing on the artboard, so I can see, yeah. "Whoa, that text is too small," or whatever. <laughs> exactly. That's super helpful. Super helpful. Right, so list of components. So these are mm -hmm. all things that I've created on this um, artboard. Of course, you can create libraries and link things um, across many files sure. and with other people. But for today, my components are very local. So mm -hmm. what do I need? I need... And what, what is the screen going to be? The drop-down sort of, the filtering? So this is the filter. Okay. Actually. So I'm just going to add a little shape here, mm -hmm. which will add, act as my background i'm going for a a slide up now i don't know why but lots of apps use a slide up pattern even mm. if the thing that you've triggered is higher up the page so, yeah that is um, funny i wonder why <laughs> i mean i guess it's closer to your thumb but it yeah, seems strange it's, if it's at the top almost sometimes. <laughs> I know, but, but I think it's so there's a, there's a small problem with the way we treat um, navigation, which is that mm -hmm. we kind of started, at least most people in design, I think, started with desktops. 
Mm. So you're used to navigation being at the top from right, desktop, right. and you bring that mm-hmm. paradigm or, or mental model for... onto a mobile. Yeah. But if you'd never been on the internet <laughs> before a desktop, you would be right. very perplexed about things that are happening at the top of the screen, which so is true. obviously very familiar for people mm-hmm. who have web. Like, especially on, I guess it's Safari, they have the back arrow always at the top, or maybe they it they changed it, but like always at the top left. And that is so annoying on mobile when you just want to go back real quick and you have to move your thumb all the way up yep, <laughs> to the top exactly. of the screen. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense, but we have, so just checking how many things mm-hmm. I had set up in my file so one two three four five six and this was an seven. awesome trick yesterday um that chimmy used for filling in text super quickly that i hadn't used before myself so i need yep. to try this so i have a list of where is that thing things that i'd already created so i have mm-hmm. my where is it i literally just saw it now filters filter okay yeah so filters so i'm just going to drag this filters um file you need to save them as text files if you just do like text edit it mm-hmm. will try to save it as a real text oh it worked yesterday <laughs> it did work the pressure uh, of the demo okay, yeah so of course on. of course let's make sure alive. i the right thing <laughs> Let's go into my layer list. So oh, I wonder if it's, that's... is it grouped? Um, sometimes I think if it's a few layers deep. Oh yeah. So, oh yes, yes, yes. So that's precisely it. So I made this, this a component to show mm. one thing. So let's, let's do one version where I don't change the text. Okay. Just to show the treatment from mm-hmm. a component, um, perspective so let's just sure. manually do this old school <laughs> um what what am i filters oh yeah the eponymous weight mm-hmm. this can't be dealing with not knowing and for those of you that are just joining welcome everyone in the chat um we've got chimmy here we're working on a bike app that she started yesterday And in about 50 minutes, we're going to have our daily creative challenge reviews that we will both be giving some feedback on. So right after this stream is the XD daily creative challenge. So make sure you watch that. We've got also Illustrator daily creative challenges and Photoshop daily creative challenges. So definitely uh, be sure to check out any of those if you would like. And we've got our schedule right up here. Um, and then after that is Design in the Dark at 2.30. So lots of fun stuff. Um, you can feel free to browse any of those. But yeah, make sure you get your submissions in um, by 50 minutes from now. <laughs> okay, so um, I obviously use a lot of numbers. So I just set the position. Mm-hmm. I can set the position of my... Um, thing to Mm -hmm. line up nicely with the height Mm, of my header here um, to help make things behave in the way that I want. I'm just going to select all of these things here in my header and create a component. Okay, a component. So those of you that have never created a component before, um, you can just right click and select create component. There's usually a plus sign here to create a component or you can use the shortcut command K. So I've got that now and I can fix the position of that when scrolling. Mm-hmm. So it will make sense when I'm using the rest of the screen and it should align beautifully to the presence of the filter. I feel like I've got some dimension wrong, but let's let's, let's check, let's mm-hmm. check. This is what prototyping is for. Yes. Oh no, but I haven't linked anything to anything. So let's do that. So what do I want? I want when the, so the other thing to note is that, so even though my filter, so Mm -hmm. the typography is 16, the icon is 24. I've just set this layer behind to make sure that I have Uh, my ideal mm -hmm. tap tap area set. So 
48 pixels, any kind of fingers will tap this quite easily. Um, and that's what I'm going to base my prototype um, interaction on. So gotcha. if you select that, then it will transition. And I'm going to go to, did I name it something? Yes, filters. Filters. And we're going to have a, should we do a slide? Let's see whether there's a difference between slide. Yeah, off and I like a push. slide. So slide up. And let's just test that quickly. There yeah. we go. So I need to keep, so I need to replicate my filter. In case you're wondering, I am discovering my functionality on the fly. This is how I <laughs> go through my process. I don't yeah. have any set. Um, hey, that's how it's real, you know. <laughs> thoughts on how things <laughs> Are working out so let's make it yeah so i think that'll work better i um hide that a little bit yep and we hide or we mute so i have a options. question for you jimmy while you're working on that for yeah. an average day for you is it mostly like do you do some testing are you talking with users are you more you know, diving into the design like you're doing here? Are you more brainstorming with the team? What's what's an average day for you look like? Oh, an average day for me these days involves a lot of meetings. So mm. many Zoom meetings, but- <laughs> Do you feel like um, it's more since like, if you've been oh, yes. working from home, really? Yes, I because that. all of the people that could just come around to my desk and say, hey, Jimmy, blah, blah, <laughs> or hey, what do you think about The quick this? little things. Now yeah. have to bring me into scheduled right. meetings. Mm -hmm. And honestly, sometimes from sort of eight till six, I've been in meetings most really? of the day. Oh, it is that's sometimes so horrific. I need to learn how to say no, though. I don't say no yeah. enough. And that's the, the, the key problem I'm here. the same way with you. <laughs> but um, so I, I, I tend to do a little bit of everything um, mm -hmm. in a day because I work with different teams mm -hmm. so i don't know what we call them officially these days but i have um, a bunch of senior product managers who okay. have specific okrs that we need to hit so mm -hmm. one for example is ensuring that customers can get help when gotcha. they need help and that we surface the help at the best point for mm -hmm. for them um so i might go into a discovery like a, a kickoff meeting, like planning what we're mm -hmm. going to build or what we're going to explore mm -hmm. with one of those teams. And then for another team, I might be creating some low fidelity concepts. So today, in fact, let's talk about my day today. So I've done low fidelity wireframes um, for a potential new feature because I needed to show them alternatives. Um, gotcha. And that included some flows um, that they could look at and Then um, I also handed over some high fidelity um, designs mm -hmm. because I'd run some research. So I sent some designs off for research on Friday and the results So came you out. generally like, do you guys have a research team on? Oh, I am so spoiled. I have <laughs> a very healthy, nice research team. Oh, that that's works so nice. Because really a quickly. lot of places don't have that. You just have to kind of figure it out yourself and you know do it online or whatever <laughs> no no um they i have i have a whole team so i i go oh, to them awesome. i plan the research with them i say hey this is what i want to find out yeah um what do you think is the best method and they're like oh yeah i think we should do this kind of testing mm -hmm. we do moderated research we do unmoderated research we do like okay. really quick things it's marvelous so it's... all over huh <laughs> <laughs> i don't need to deal with recruitment which is probably yeah. the only thing i don't like about user <laughs> research have you ever done the, um, I think the most interesting user research is where you're sitting in the room and you've got like the two way glass and you sit, sit in there taking yes. notes and that's like, it, I think I saw a Mad Men episode about that once and I was like, wow, I'm really doing this. <laughs> yes, you know? I, I have definitely <laughs> done those. So yeah. I've been, uh, I've, I've had the job of doing my own user research many times. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and one one of the companies I worked with, we would hire an agency 
to okay. do it and it was really nice it was like a day yeah. out of the office or two days right the right agency they'd have two two-way glass and yeah. all you'd need to do was ask questions you wouldn't even need to, to, to moderate they take was, care of all of it wow yes they facilitated they provided the reports it was a oh, dream that is nice dream situation <laughs> uh, but I, I think I still have it pretty easy right now with mm-hmm. having my team able to to to, to help me with yeah. testing um in case people are wondering what's going on I'm just I'm so um sort of panicky about stuff that I feel like I that's what designers have to, have to be like though have you know? to <laughs> fix this even though it's just a, a wee demo and none of yeah. you really care about this being <laughs> perfect but I just can't I just can't yeah look at it in that state so now <laughs> we have the right dimensions that work Looks awesome. let us see whether my little trick will also work so oh, these are Faisal bikes. said Love that these artists explain their day-to-day approach to design. Much appreciated. Raphael, he agrees that research is fun. I'll let you go ahead and uh, drag those in. Oh, no. oh it didn't oh, work. No. What the heck? <laughs> Changed it. This is horrendous. Okay, so you're all going to have to deal with just the version that has them sized correctly. That's okay. But they're the same height. That's okay yeah. for now. Okay, so I need to get on to make sure that we get some more okay. fun interactions going. So this is, assuming we pick one of these bikes, um, let's see if I can at least get some bike names in. Bike, bike, bike. Um, Brahm asked, on which daily creative challenge do we get feedback? So I'm really just gonna be looking at probably Discord, maybe also Behance and just starting from the bottom and then going up. So if you did, if you submitted one from today, that's fine and we'll review that or if it's from yesterday whichever uh, day you're working on, we'll give you feedback. So it does not matter, basically. So this works now. Um, oh, the so I was just able to okay. drop the text into there. Awesome. I'll just do the same with the pricing. Mm-hmm. So you see that it's up to the pricing. Um, and just to continue with our little style here, we can't have that. What do we want? Do we want a bit of blue? It's a bit blue Ooh, that isn't cool. it? Yeah. And then we'll make that our wonderful, oh, where did it go? Playlist. 80% black. Sorted. Look at that. Really quick to get things done. And okay. So now I would like to get into. Is that what bikes are all costing these days? Because it seems kind of, I haven't shopped for a bike since I was probably like in fifth grade, but it seems like a lot, like a thousand dollars. I don't know. Um, these, these are, these are, yes, these That's are it? very, oh, these are okay. all actual prices because I, oh, I told you I, I went and got this information. This, this yeah. is very carefully planned data. People. Um, they're, they're all sorts of plugins. So I like to describe myself as a low tech tech person. Mm-hmm. So there's plugins that you can use to get information in by um, like Google Sheets yeah. or um, other cool. kinds of, of things. But I have been too set in my basic text ways to actually connect to Google Sheets. <laughs> I but... think that way works great, though. I'm going to start using that. <laughs> I think it's like because it's just like basic text. I don't yeah. need to. Um, obviously the Google Sheets plugin, especially for people that already work with like real data that's right, held somewhere. Right. And if you um, have a if, ton of it, maybe, and you need to change yeah, it exactly. easier or something. But... You can connect to something that's changeable yeah. and live as opposed to something that you have to update yourself. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's get this page quickly done because we're going to do a wee bit of voice prototyping cool. here with these screens. So mm-hmm. this is my bike that i want to buy let's find the right image uh bikes 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 so it is a tavist just... we'll add some other controls in a moment but if i were what do i do, do i let's make this a repeat grid so that you can see the other Colors, and then I will just drag. So now, 
but then make this a scroll group. A horizontal scroll yeah that'd be cool then the shirt let's do a quick check mm -hmm. nope oh i did not make the whole thing a scroll group so i need to make sure i've got the whole oh it was just inside that yeah, secondary just inside. layer yeah. So you can tell what you've selected because mm -hmm. I can see that I've got the green, which mm -hmm. indicates that I've got the score group. And I know now that there I've got go. the right thing. That looks better. It's gone. So <laughs> that looks better. Quick test. There we go. Yeah, cool. And obviously, if I added the right controls here, then I would be able to also choose the mm. colors um, because these sections would have a bit more than just the colors. It would have like sure. um, the up close pedals, the chain, the bracket, mm -hmm. whatever. Right, so a little bit of voice. Let's get some voice. I, I don't know if people are as excited about voice. I love voice prototyping. Um, prototyping as I am. But what I want to do now is just have a little ding happen when you add something to the cart. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to select my prototype tab here and on tap on tap so why do I have two so I have a cover and I have a tap okay so the tap is the thing I want so if you add to cart it will take you to this date mm -hmm where the cart has a little notification on it. And what I want to do, so I have that auto animating, I'm going to add it to cart, and we're going to do audio playback. So this is what it would normally be like, mm -hmm. um, I explained a bit earlier. Um, so you have the interaction and with voice, you can choose an additional action. So I click on this action here, I can choose audio playback or speech playback. Um, what we're going to do to start with is let's try speech playback. Um, we have a choice of voices. I'm going to start with Amy. I think Amy might be British. We'll see. <laughs> if she's not the British one. I'm going to definitely change it to the <laughs> British one. Um, give you a taste of. And so we'll just use something simple added to cart. I hope she will be as excited and adding <laughs> an exclamation mark to hopefully guarantee that excitement. Okay, so that's done. Let's do a quick test. I bet I haven't linked up everything. So we, of course, need to be able to get to the bike. So I have a Batavos somewhere, but let's not be pick pedantic. Let's just do that. <laughs> so that's just a normal transition to bike. Mm -hmm. I don't want it to slide up. I just want it to, let's just make it non, nothing dramatic there. And now hopefully all of those links work. Okay. Ooh. The awesome. magic moment. Have I shared my sound? This is a pertinent time to check. Write in the chat if you don't hear anything. Okay. And I'll listen too. Let's see. I didn't hear anything. It might be because you had, do, do you hear it in your headphones though? I heard it in my headphones. Okay. So um, I think I might need to share right that's okay we can oh that's a shame it says yeah. added to cart and <laughs> that immediately kills all of the other fantastic things that i was going to show you with <laughs> voice but um we i hope imagine. that you <laughs> you all go away and really test out so Apart from speech mm -hmm. playback, which I chose, I you can also opt. Hold on. 
my prototype emerge. Um, where is sorry about this one? Um, you can also choose audio playback. Mm -hmm. And when you choose audio playback, you can choose um, a file. So I have a, a few sort of sounds that I have saved in my sounds folder. And, and where do you get your sounds? Because I feel like a lot of people oh, ask that as well. It's, it's hard to find good sounds for micro interactions because you don't want it to be too like clangy or some of them are just very cheesy. It's like a horn honking on like a car or something and you just want something like nice and subtle. So I'm curious to hear where you find yours. So I'm pretty certain that I found a folder with 28 different sounds after I looked at Howard Pinsky's, mm. um, one of Howard Pinsky's videos on mm -hmm. NetXD, because I was thinking, where am I going to get sounds from? <laughs> right. And either it was um, in the in the particular video or post or whatever it was, mm -hmm. but I would say go to NetXD, look yeah. for one of the things of voice prototyping, mm -hmm. and there's a link to someone that has okay. resources. Um, yeah, there's some great resources on there. That's good to know. Yeah. But I definitely got the womp womp and the <laughs> ding the womp womp, yeah. from both of them because yeah. essentially I was going to put the the, the ding for when mm -hmm. you added something to the cart yeah. and then I was going to use the womp womp for when you deleted something from the <laughs> oh. cart because it's really cool. Womp, you just hear ding and then <laughs> womp womp. <laughs> Which, I'm of course, start is really good. That. that is so funny. <laughs> it would be great for this, like, yeah. hipster bike store. If you heard that sound, <laughs> you might be motivated to pay the right. 900 pounds for the bike. Right, um, right. Just saying. <laughs> or, like, a ka or something if you put, like, a really <laughs> expensive one in your cart. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, while I was doing all of that, I remembered why my filter um, interaction was a bit rubbish. So mm -hmm. what I wanted was an overlay. Ah. Um, so I didn't want it to go off to a different screen. I wanted sure. an overlay, so it kind of slides on. So that's why I was a bit... Mm, so you didn't let's... add that top part. Yes, let's get overlay. this out. Um, and it should now work as intended. Now, when we go into the um, prototype for the overlay, mm -hmm. The thing to note is that you get this green, um, what's it called? Thing that helps lines. you, <laughs> green lines <laughs> that tell you where yeah. to, to show the, the filters. Mm -hmm. So I just want a centered filter. Sure. So if I test it now, and I'm just going to set my home here just so I can be sure I will come over there. And now, I knew it. I knew it. It was supposed to work <laughs> in a precisely this way. Um, obviously, I need to work on my layers because sure. you can see that some things are hanging over. But that's that's why I was like a bit cool. confused because I was like, I did the maps. Right, I knew it was supposed right. to like line up yeah. um, at the right point. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what I'm going to do, um, since I can't do voice, which I was very excited about, is just go a little bit into some of the features that you would use or need sure. if you are making a responsive product mm, so yeah we'll just start with a new artboard so i'm just using okay. a for my artboard um and i'm going to choose this and the reason i'm starting with small is because it's 2020 and really if your site doesn't work or your app whatever it is your site doesn't work on mobile um you've kind of lost a whole bunch of people right. because most people are looking at even business software on their mobile phones mm -hmm. these days so it really makes sense to do a and i found even um the difference between like mobile web versus if it's mobile app like your actual you a lot of times we spend a ton of time doing the actual app and that's where we want people to spend the most time but for instance like this one app that i'm working on um sometimes it'll open from twitter like we'll share something 
um, through the app on Twitter. So like new users will discover it through the mobile web and mobile web. Normally you don't have like the bottom nav portion because there yeah. would be like two separate lines and it would just look funky. So even just like little differences like that, I find are very, uh, just important to look at. Yes, it's super important to understand the difference. Um, the other thing about web is that you can't predict. So with app, I don't know roughly what size device they're going to be on yeah. with web. They could be on anything. They could be on a mobile phone. They could be mm -hmm. on a tablet. They could be landscape tablet, landscape mobile, yeah. any sort of thing, super wide desktop. Um, so you have to use grids and patterns. Mm -hmm. So speaking about that, Let us, so what I want to do is if we imagine, so let me use one of my other scroll groups, mm, not scroll groups. Let's use just the component, just the, oh, I'm going to regret not making these components, aren't I? <laughs> I'm going to have to copy them. Doing it on the fly, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to create sort of a, a longish page mm -hmm. so that we can do a couple of things like anchor links. Mm, so yeah. here's my content and I'm just going to make it quite long. So obviously it will take a lot of scrolling to get mm -hmm. there. Um, but if I expand my artboard, so I see the rest of the content and I want it so that when you get to this point of the page, mm -hmm. you might have a back to top option so right. i love a floating button i get so annoyed um, when people do not have that on their websites <laughs> <laughs> i'll usually just close out because i don't want to like scroll through especially if i'm shopping or something i don't want to scroll through everything yeah um it's super helpful um so mm -hmm. wait, wait, what am i trying to do dimensions let's make it 64 64 i'm going to lock my aspect ratio I could also have held down shift because I did that and it would give me a perfect um, circle as mm -hmm. I created the thing. I'm going to add a shadow. That looks shadowy enough, but maybe I should bump up the... One thing and I to like note. that you, you've used the blue just like super sparingly. Like you didn't use it for mountain and road and all of like behind that text. It's only really for like CTA buttons and anything that's very important. Because a lot of times it's easy, I think, to go overboard with color. But I think you did a nice job of that here. Just using it very, um, only, only where it's super necessary. Yeah, indeed. I've tried my best. So... <laughs> I'm going to position this sort of here mm -hmm. and I'm going to send with, hold on, let me just make sure I've styled it appropriately. Hold on, let's just, I'm just playing with style now because you know I can. <laughs> so let's go for a yeah. radial gradient. Oh, look at that. I mean, I would not actually be delivering this in real life because <laughs> gradients, so if we imagine this is a web mm -hmm. um, site, gradients, shadows, they have to be used a little bit sparingly because mm. they add up on web. Um, what's happening here with our shadow is where it says it's an offset of three and a blur of six. Mm -hmm. I have six other shapes behind this one, all offset by three oh, pixels on the y-axis. I didn't know axis. that that's what that meant. That's I how thought it was that just magic like, happens. I had no idea. Okay. <laughs> wow. So that's really cool. Huh. Not, not and did you know that from like your developer background or did you just learn that during like designing? Um, <laughs> So I guess it must be a little bit from my developer background because mm -hmm. I'm really interested in my technical constraints. Sure. Like I don't want to create design that's not buildable. So I yeah, will yeah. often attend architectural meetings um, when they're making mm -hmm. decisions on how we're going to build so that I understand the back end right. of the systems that, that is I'm so building for. So if you do like 28 blur, then it's going to take super long to load or something <laughs> like that. Yes. I, mean, I hope no one would do 28, but as a hypothetical. <laughs> if, if anyone was doing 28, <laughs> I would hope that it was a very sort of special right, right. moment. 
the most important CTA button ever. Yes. Okay. So mm -hmm. now I have this. I'm just going to make it okay. a component so that I can mm -hmm. find it later if I need to. Back to top. You will. Those of you that didn't come for yesterday's session, I am obsessed with naming things appropriately. I started designing in Photoshop, and I would use files that were shared with people, and they would send me their Photoshop administrator files with like one million layers. Oh, oh my days! That's the oh worst. my days. The worst. <laughs> That so, is the worst. I actually want that to be hidden, but also have a fixed position. Mm -hmm. um, what am I looking for? Oh, I need to find it. Yep, so fixed position. So let's see whether my positioning makes sense. But basically, okay. it will get to a point in my scroll where that button will show up and the interaction that I want for that is um so let's go to prototype and I can use an anchor link where I'm effectively just dragging this to the top of the screen. So mm -hmm. when I click that button it will jump me up to the top of the screen. Now I shouldn't need to do any more. I think it does have to be oh, like to I be. don't think it can be transparent. Um, otherwise, Trans so it's not transparent. It's just I think it's just positioned poorly. Hold on. So because it needs to be visible at the time that I so that I can right. There it is. <laughs> I didn't know it was behind everything. Yes, yeah, so I put it behind. Mm -hmm. um, but if I didn't have these things there, then it would work. But sure. for now, let's 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 see. Let's see. We're learning on the fly. Mm -hmm. No. I think it does have to be above the fold, like above the dotted line. If it's oh, going to yes. be, um, yes, yes, yes. So if you're going to keep it in the same place, or if you if you check that little, yeah. Can, place check mark or fixed position when scrolling you are indeed right that's precisely why it had to be that's what it's all about just trial and error yeah, sometimes it's... you know just pushing pixels around you know <laughs> <laughs> okay yes so um obviously my content will need to be reworked to make sure it's sized appropriately mm -hmm. but it's Gets the job done. Working mm -hmm. as expected. Yeah. So that's a little anchor link there. The other thing that we can do is to certify on group there, these here and have all of those elements, then I'm able to, what do I want to do to them? I'm trying to think of the best way to. What are you trying to do? I want to show um, to show what's it called the content aware layout. So pad, padding and stacks all them. So mm, I think gotcha. I'm just going to okay, so I don't want it to be in grid. Actually, I should have just done. This and for way. those of you guys that are just joining us, we've got about 19 minutes until we're going to be reviewing our XD Daily Creative Challenge submissions from you guys. So be sure to uh, put your submissions for your designs, even if it's just a work in progress, that's fine too, um, into the XD uh, Discord. And if you're not a member of that, definitely encourage you to join so you can get feedback on your work and. Just, it's a fun place to chat with other designers. So here's the link. It's bit.ly slash XD Discord. And you can put it in the uh, current challenge channel. So just look for that on the left side. But yeah, we'll be reviewing those in about 19 minutes here. So stay tuned for that. And also, if you um, are just joining now, uh, Jimmy's working on her bike app. So we started this yesterday, built out from the splash screen, um, all through kind of the checkout 
adding something to the cart process and yeah. So what are you working on now? Yeah, so I'm just trying to get, so I'm just going to have to auto school it here. So a bunch of components on the page so I can group them. Okay, have I got them all? So I just, I, I use my layer list sometimes to make sure I've got things. Mm. And if I create a group, then I can do things like create stacks. Um, so here, XD, so XD tries to do a lot of work for you. So it tries to figure out things so that you don't always have to figure them out. So here I've got, it's decided it's a horizontal stack. And what happens now is that if I try to move one of my components around, it's mm -hmm. behaving mm -hmm. in ways that if you didn't use stacks, wouldn't be possible. Mm -hmm. So normally, if you try to move things around, they don't observe, they don't behave like this. So here I can, because they're a stack, mm -hmm. they're aware of each other and you can yeah. sort of move things around. So I used to work on Vogue and GQ websites. It's a lot of content. I would have to create mm. mock-ups with 50, 60, 70, 80 pieces of content. And at the time I did not have this feature. So it would be <laughs> painful manipulation of yeah. <laughs> the problems. <laughs> I bet. Um, <laughs> um, so, stacks really work and yeah. if you change it to vertical um then it arranges things vertically on the page whereas horizontal sort of moves things horizontally and i feel um, like it's good for things like if if you have i mean you have cards here but i feel like it's good for if there's like a lot of content in one specific card like if it was like yes just a bunch of details underneath like price and like color and uh, bike name and just like a bunch of things all at once and then just like spending yes exactly so if i had the time stuff. to build mm -hmm. this out properly where there's like <laughs> different elements in each section mm -hmm. i would be using scroll stacks because i don't want things change and i have to manipulate yeah. them individually pixel mm -hmm. by pixel like i just want to move the card round move right. the price round um as i want so it's a exactly. really neat um thing mm -hmm. to have yeah. in your arsenal Agreed. <sighs> mm. do you have any more oh yeah responsive resize Respons so, oh that's right let's let's see let's make this a little bit smaller i'm always curious about what other designers processes are for responsive resize because personally i mean i feel like i was never really taught how to design for responsive resize. So I feel like I kind of, oh, I've got like a few breakpoints and I'll design something, you know, at each breakpoint, but I feel I never feel like, okay, this is exactly the right way to do it. So I'm curious to hear your mm. process. Like, okay, like from a previous developer standpoint, like what helps them or whatever. Right. So I work with developers when mm -hmm. I'm doing responsive design, because here's the thing, things can look, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm trying to get my <laughs> oh, no power worries. cable. Oh, yep. Onto my <laughs> what happens when you want so many cords everywhere? <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, I, 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 I've lost my train of thought, what was I saying? Oh, like working with developers and responsive. Oh, right, yes. Or like breakpoints so, and yes. what's your... So look how gorgeous this stuff yeah. all looks with mm -hmm. a few minutes work in, XD, right? Mm -hmm. What happens if you're designing for web is that things might not render in the browser as you've designed. Sure. So decisions that I make about responsive web design, I make mm -hmm. with engineers because they know what the latest browser tricks and tips right. are. So we mm -hmm. talk about things together. Um, what we tend to do is that we will set depending on where the technology is um, uh, and what they're using. So sometimes it's like um, Flexbox or it's Bootstrap. 
and they're very tight rules about how they use it. So boot, mm. Bootstrap, you have to use 12 columns or 16 columns, I think. Okay. Flexbox has to work in a certain way. So we'll agree what it is that they're using. Mm. And I'm just going to show you an example of how I would lay yeah. out my work if I wasn't doing... Um, so I have breakpoints. So mm. at, at, we will have something like a 320, we'll have a 600, mm-hmm. um, we'll have... Hold on, let's do this here. So I it's want to go in order. It seems like maybe I, I am doing it the right way. It's you just do it separate artboards at different breakpoints. As agreed with with the developers. Um, the developers. What's the latest? Okay. And then I'd set up a grid. So mm-hmm. here you have the grid function. So I can set one off. You have the columns. Mm-hmm. So if I'm using a 12 column grid across all of the breakpoints mm-hmm. then i set so let's make this one 12 as well i'm just using the defaults for now but sure. you'll see why this matters and say i'm doing this design that you see here we might agree that we have a two column layout on mobile but then you have to agree what's happening on the other breakpoints right mm-hmm. so let's yeah you might want to make each have I got components here? Super glad I do. So I can make <laughs> them bigger. This one wonderful reason to use components. So I can make them True. bigger to match my... Oh, no. But I'd have to break them out. Oh, yeah. Because it's growing <laughs> everywhere else. But you could but... Um, ungroup, ungroup that component and make it a new component for yes, 100%. iPad or whatever size you wanted. I was trying to be although maybe you want to go back if you don't want to like ruin all of your other ones <laughs> i don't know oh, how many you are right that okay, on. Yeah. <laughs> so let's get rid of let's ungroup these ones so first i have to ungroup the group so um there's ungroup the group and hopefully that means i've taken away the stack and then I can delete these ones. What have I left? Okay, so now we have one. Mm-hmm. So on this breakpoint, so I'm not going to faff around with that one, but imagine that one's correct. Yeah. At this breakpoint, I might want to. So let's unclip the component and then create a new component. So just command K for those of you that don't know the... So here, mm-hmm. can I even count? So that's sort of maintaining the six column behavior. Sure. Mm-hmm. And for this kind of component, in theory, if this is all that happens to it, mm-hmm. you don't have to design all the breakpoints because you would specify, okay, this component exists at uh, six columns okay. on all the breakpoints. Gotcha, gotcha. But if you had something mm-hmm. that, so let's pretend that this is supposed to be our hero image oh, sure. over here, mm-hmm. then you want it to behave in a different way at this right. breakpoint than it does on the small screen, mm-hmm. potentially. Um, I just wanted to take that moment to show. So you can see this dimension mm-hmm. here. Um, because I've selected responsive resize, it will grow the whole thing in the way that it thinks is best Mm -hmm. for all of the elements in this design. So you can see that it's made the, it's kept the aspect ratio of the picture. It's kept the height of the the Mm -hmm. bit that has the adventure. And that looks elegant and nice without me having to do any work. If I didn't have responsive resize, then it can do any number of things. Yeah, it kind of messes with the, the text it, box it, down there a bit in a way that we probably don't want. Exactly. And if you set it to manual, then you can set specific things to happen. So I'm going to set it so that it doesn't grow at the top. Now, bear with me, people. I struggle with <laughs> space, spatial awareness, I like to describe mm. myself as having dyslexia of space. Mm. So figuring out what's sure. left, right, top, bottom, 
might take me a couple of tries. That's okay. But <laughs> so that's fixed height height wise. Mm-hmm. So it maintains the growth downwards because I've taken away that. Mm, um, yeah. Top. If I then made this one so that it wasn't a fixed height, we should see a change in the behavior of this. So now the bottom, hold on, let's hide this um, grid so that. So this see. would be like um, iPad size, I guess? Yes. It looks this like would be iPad sort of, or like or tablet. gigantic phone. <laughs> right. That would be a big phone. <laughs> <laughs> So um, if I wanted this component to behave mm -hmm. in a certain way as I grew it, sure. I would make these manual changes so I can mm. fix the, the height of something. Okay. Let's say I wanted this to be permanently sort of take up half the screen. I can fix the width, for example. And then as I grow, select the right thing. You can see that it's mm -hmm. no longer sort of centering yeah. with the object because I fixed the width. So it's I really I feel handy. like uh, whatever this is called, like fixing like to certain sides, it, it's kind of equivalent to me for or with like Pathfinder. Pathfinder, I feel like I just have to kind of test it out. I'm never really mm. sure like, you know, what, what part is going to be subtracted. Same with this. I just it's one of those testing things. You just got to see it. Yes, but I think once you've done the setup, so mm -hmm. say I created this component, which is going to be used for different kinds of things. And I, I, do, I did this setup, then it would always behave in the way that mm, I expected right, as I moved right. it from artboard to artboard. For sure. Which is, I can promise you, uh, a very big, wonderful feature compared to some of the other things that <laughs> I had to do when mm. I didn't have these features yeah um so it looks like you've got like mobile we've got tablet and maybe like a desktop size um we've yes. got about six minutes left so if you wanted to kind of build those out like a super rough you could or whatever you feel like okay so let's just bring this our single view in and let's say I never want this to get bigger than three columns, four columns mm -hmm. on this screen. And we've got a question from Ryan. He asked, um, how long does it take for you to complete an app from start to finish? And maybe this isn't, you know, what you do from day to day. Maybe it's more like you work on long term projects, like six months or a year or like a continual thing. Um, but how long does it take for you to complete an app? And do you focus on just as the design for the app or both design and coding from Ryan? Right. So I, my days as a developer are long gone. I do not <laughs> code very mm -hmm. much these days. Um, I keep saying I will, but I haven't made time for it. Um, so I tend to do lots of the design. And the answer to that question, like most questions about design, will be it depends. It mm. depends on whether I'm working with a sort of quick startup -y type of um, team that mm -hmm. want to push features as quickly as possible, in which case I can build out a whole feature in a couple of weeks. Um, mm -hmm. It also depends on how many steps of the process that I'm going to do. So I have like an ideal process where I define the problem, I empathize, um, I prototype, I test, and then I start to build for real after mm -hmm. I've got everything right. If you're doing that, then obviously you need time to execute all of those things yeah. before you can start building or designing. Um, it also depends on whether I'm handing over something that's perfect, finished designs, True. as my developers <laughs> love to say. Yeah. Um, or whether we're no assuming, such thing. <laughs> as is correct, that right. the design is never finished and therefore we should just build what we, yeah. we know and learn and then iterate. Mm -hmm. So it really depends. Um, I probably should use something like this to show the responsive sizing. So 
So let's see these three things in a group of some sort. So if I pull them over here with responsive mm -hmm. resize, they just go nicely to the... Does have so, the job for us, love it. I know, headers are kind <laughs> of the easiest thing yeah. to resize. But if we didn't have responsive resizing, you might find that things do not necessarily behave in the way that you want yeah, them to. Too bad, I mean, actually. I don't have, I don't have enough. I don't think I have enough in here for it not right, to behave, right, right. for it to behave badly. <laughs> but things can go a bit, yeah, odd if, if you, you have a lot you of don't. things in a group for sure. And so, like on desktop, would you? I almost might, um, since we have like there's so much space. I feel like I usually try to add bring more of the items that are maybe a level, yes. level lower and bring them up to just like the top view to give yeah. people more information so they don't have to, you know, take another step to click. Is that something that you would do on this page? That is cards? something that I would do. So let's, let's give you a quick, oh no, I have layouts everywhere. I don't really <laughs> want them all. Um, let's imagine I was trying to bring this into desktop, for mm -hmm. example. So on, on the app, you can see that you first have to go into shop before you have any access to the different kinds of things. On desktop, you'll have room for the menu to be fully exposed. Yeah. So you'd have all of the things here and you would be able to just do like a quick uh, drop down menu mm -hmm. or overlay um, and have access to the full breadth of the website. That would be one quick thing that you could do with a much bigger screen. Um, the other thing is here where you kind of go step by step, you have to go first and fight and then you go into adventure. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I would probably just land them somewhere here with all gotcha. the bikes and then filter because they have access to change things in the menu as quickly as possible. So, right. um, so kind of combining those two screens really. Yes. I feel like mm -hmm. I, I shorten the journey as much as I can right. on desktop because you just have, you have so much room. Yeah. I actually find designing for desktop sometimes to be a struggle because of how much I room I have. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes I think, oh, maybe it's just because I've been doing mobile for so long. But I think to your point, it's like there's just so much space and to fill it up is like a real challenge sometimes. <laughs> yeah, um, it is. So sometimes I will think about things from a mobile first perspective, but mm -hmm. most of the time I actually do side by side because I want sure. to make sure that I know that this thing that is a priority on mobile is mm -hmm. also a priority on desktop when I have more room. Um, yeah. And if you have a hero image, how much room should it take? There's a concept mm -hmm. of the fold, which is what people see when, so I'm just doing commands. Um, okay, I'm trying to get it to 100% but <laughs> what people see yeah. on the first bit of screen mm -hmm. um, because what is available so if you have if you had a strap line or you had a cta main call to action it really needs to be visible here it needs oh, to be yeah, visible here sure. you can't have it strolling down to the bottom mm -hmm. um, and if you do if you put all of the information that is possible here and then you can't fit it into your small mobile screen it's really interesting. I find design for um, responsive web to be quite interesting. Yeah, I design agree. It's quite a challenge. <laughs> type of, I think type it's typography. my least favorite part, to be honest. <laughs> well, maybe you can tell me what you do with typography because I try to follow my lovely um, eight point, like mm -hmm. eight, like I use a, a 32, a 24, a 48. But when I go to large desktop, so let's make this 48. That looks gigantic. Yeah. Yet <laughs> it's you you kind of have plenty of room. Right. If you, if you have a, so some of the screens I designed for are like 1600 pixels, right? Or mm -hmm. 1920. So this is like you kind of want the typography to speak for itself. But sometimes right. when I zoom in, I'm just like, oh no, this is so <laughs> big. It's huge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes what I'll do is I'll um just like bring the menu, like the nat, everything that's in the hamburger bar, like out on top horizontal. So it kind of takes up some of that space, but I agree yeah. with you. It can just get 
like huge but that's I guess why testing just like using that preview button to test all the time for me is like super helpful 100 percent. the other uh, thing I do oh, go ahead. is sometimes I I just um max out my design at something sensible so like a thousand pixels mm -hmm. particularly if I have lots of copy because mm. when you're reading it's not comfortable to read text right. that goes all end the way end, across. for example <laughs> so my yeah. copy is always contained within 960 mm. 1000 pixels max it will yeah. never exceed that point yeah um That's you can rule. have full bleed images and stuff but mm -hmm. once you have like a text heavy page, oh yeah that, that would be wild no one's gonna read all the <laughs> can way you imagine? <laughs> just like uh, right <laughs> just like one like, whole line going probably next across. string by the time yeah. you're done reading those lines and i mean i could imagine on my i have like one of the ultra wide like curved like that would be a nightmare <laughs> <laughs> all the way across that exactly all right well it is about time for our reviewing um the xd daily creative challenges so mm -hmm. i'll go ahead and start sharing my screen here in a moment get this set up and pull up discord all right can you see my screen all right cool so if you guys have never joined discord uh, this is what it looks like. So over here, we've got all of our, um, it's not channels. I always forget what the name is, but, um, XD, if you want to join also, there's the Photoshop one, there is an illustrator, uh, discord. So feel free to browse through any of these. And then we've got all of the challenges over our channels over here. And if you want to look specifically at what other people are creating, you can check in this current challenge channel right here. So we're just going to go through and to look at some of you guys' work, we'll just scroll through from bottom to top and see uh, what you guys are making. But first, I'm going to hop over to the actual homepage and we'll see what today's challenge was. All right. So if you want to follow along with me, we're on behance.net slash challenge slash XD. And I host this one a lot, so I feel like I could like recite this whole page just um, immediately. So let's scroll down. It looks like we're on pay day six. And today's challenge is to design an interactive chart for a finance mobile app and allow users to scroll around the chart using scroll groups, something we were working on today. So scrollable mm -hmm. charts. And you can always grab the starter file by just hitting that get started button. And that'll bring you over here. That's just like a little XD sort of file. And if you miss any of the streams, you can go back and watch them back there. But that's where the everyday's um, challenges are unlocked. And yeah, so this is kind of, um, we'll, we'll give some feedback today versus yesterday was more of just like encouragement. So I guess we'll start at the bottom here. Um, let's see if we can find any like actual prototypes to click through. So let's look at this one. So it takes me to Behance. Ooh, we've got a whole case study already. Oh my gosh. All right. So, and this may have been from yesterday's challenge. I'm not entirely sure. But this one is from Pollock Jane. So it looks like we've got a desktop website about being a confident freelancer. That's a cute illustration. <laughs> Adorable. Unpaid invoices, pro uh, problem clients, okay, creating an account. What are your thoughts so far, Jimmy? Um, oh, we've got a little movie file here. Let's right, take okay, a look yes. at this. Have a look at that one. Yeah. I think this was from yesterday's challenge. Get started. Right. I was thinking that doesn't have anything to do with Yeah, finance now. <laughs> your account because the xd daily creative challenge is actually like right after this one so i assume some people may not have done today's but that's okay yeah so i i mean i think that it's safe to say that this is meant to be a fun friendly prototype lots of yeah. great use of curves and natural uh shapes i mm -hmm. guess in it um i like the little interactions um, yeah. That little um, fly this out This is menu super cute. It's super that. cute. And obviously, wonderful home estates over there. Mm -hmm. um, um, 
the little bit of feedback that I'll give, and I don't know whether it's a screen thing here, but that placeholder text, I can't see it. Um, so upping mm -hmm. the contrast of those will be super helpful um, for people. And then potentially, I don't know what the interaction is when you go in, but if you have placeholder text in the box, then when people start typing into it, they don't remember what it was that they were supposed to be entering. So hopefully mm. there is a bit of interaction there that pops out the yeah. label above the text when they're typing. Are you talking or about this one right here? Yeah. So you see okay. how all of those placeholders are in there. So if yeah. I start to type, I might forget what it is I was right, trying to right. enter. So it's super useful. Um, and I can't tell about the sizing, but some of that typography looks a little bit small. Mm -hmm. um, and the link, so forgot password is a link, I presume. And sign up so. is a link, I presume, but they're treated differently. Mm -hmm. So we probably want to be a little bit more consistent in yeah. our treatment of our design tokens. Mm -hmm. I would agree there. Yeah, very playful though. Um, yeah, it's really I would really say, great. yeah, like keep the, try to keep the illustrations consistent. Like this style is a little bit different from like this one versus the other one. But yeah, so very fun. Thank you. Who was this? Pollock. Cool. Let's go on to the next one. Yeah, landing page. I should have read that first. <laughs> right. Okay. So this one. Ooh, by Anna. I like Let's those colors it. already. Oh, it's a YouTube video. Oh, love this. Okay. Let's see if I can make this full screen. You can still see this, right? Yes. Very okay. good full screen there. So VV Go, is it going? It is. It's very slow. <laughs> I was like, is it even going? Let's go. Okay. Um. All right, so we've got a login screen. Sign up for free and discover. Okay, so it's sort of like onboarding, I would say. Yeah. Different progress. I would make these little circles like much smaller. Usually those are pretty small. But also maybe make the ones that aren't selected a bit mm -hmm. smaller than the one that's selected so that you're immediately aware. Yes, yes, I agree. Because um, in case um, people don't know, using just color to indicate state mm. is not very accessible. True. Um, because if you can't the see the color, blindness. then you have no idea what's very happened. True. Mm -hmm. Private key. Okay. I like the feedback. I'm always a fan of feedback. So having yeah. that button changed to copy is really nice. We've got a map, quests nearby. Ooh, scroll groups with the map for panning. Nice. Ugh. Beginner tour. Learn how it works and win 15. Some sort of token there. So I think this is like a treasure map sort of app. Nice. Okay, tree quest. I think the main thing here is trying to keep things consistent, I would say. Like the uh, typography just looks kind of like different coloring and styling of the typography looks a little bit different from screen to screen. But I feel like the interactions themselves and the layouts um, so far are looking good. Yep. I agree. Start a um, task. So the thing I'm not 100% sure of is whether this is representing an app or a website. Um, mm. The... I guess it's Android, so you have the hovering right. uh, nav bar, mm -hmm. which is a pattern that I'm familiar with on a web app, right? Um, which is why you also see the Android mm -hmm. thing. And I guess all the top navigation, yes, because there's a search bar yeah. at the top. So yes, that's definitely web. So strong use of bringing the navigation a little bit closer to the thumb. I'm mm -hmm. always a fan of such decisions. Wow, this is really built out. Like, this is a full app. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is a five minute YouTube video. I'm impressed. <laughs> okay, so then we get a token. Lovely. Scroll through some of those tokens. It's cool. 
your reward. Okay, I'm just going to quickly kind of go through the rest of this so we can make sure we get to some other folks. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing this one. Let me close out of that. That was Anna. Thank you so much, Anna, for sharing mm -hmm. that. Let me give that a little emoji. Woo! Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I like looking at the... We can look at this one. YouTube homepage. Okay. And this is by Serhan. So just a static PNG, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, it looks kind of similar to what it is now. I guess mostly just the visuals are a little bit different as far as like, we've got a drop shadow over here on these cards, um, more like rounded corners on each of the thumbnails. Mm -hmm. and... I'm surprised you know what YouTube, I mean, I was just thinking, have I even looked at YouTube on <laughs> a desktop yeah. in the last year? I have no idea. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah. And the banner, I would bring this banner all the way, just make sure um, like your grid is the same going all the yeah. way down. So make sure this is all the way on the same line, same over here, but it looks pretty nice overall. Or if they're not going to be the same size, at least center the top one yeah. so that there's equal negative space on either side. I agree. Same with like these um, like icons up here, maybe those could be a little centered but pretty minimal. Looks good. Mm. Very nice. Move on to another one. All right. So this one is by Pramod. Let's check this out. Oh, where did it go? <laughs> hmm. I can't find it. That's a shame. It looked very promising. Well, we can look at the static PNG. Maybe the link was messed up or something. Mm -hmm. Um, so a landing page. All right. Got um, some temporary text there. That's okay. <laughs> oof. I'm not a fan of temporary text. I think, I think that you should be very familiar yeah. with the content that you're designing for. Mm -hmm. Um, but I am a little more lax for like the daily creative <laughs> challenges though, since it's, uh, I, uh, very quick, I don't know. I suppose. <laughs> I don't know because yeah, you, you can just like copy text from the web, right? Yeah, we live in true. Google times. Um, and the, there's the plugin where you can just um, yes. input some like real text. So check that one out. There is. Um, the one thing to say here is that the treatment of the features, like the, the I assume it's the nav bar at the top, top mm -hmm. it feels like labels. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know that people would necessarily gravitate towards clicking any of those things. Sure. So yeah. It might be worth sort of testing i guess if you want to to, to have that sort of mm -hmm. style yeah i would keep like you were saying keep the cta buttons in the pill if you want to keep the pill just keep it to like one of these not all of these up here maybe these could just be like an underline on whatever page you're on or just bolded text but mm. i agree with you up there but yeah fun little illustration over here something yeah. to do with finance i'm assuming <laughs> And the blues, I love the blues, mm -hmm. the contrast yes. of the dark and the light. Very nice. I like that. All right. Let's take a look at this one by Abdullah. Ab so that one Abu looks rich. Abudala. Yeah. All right. Something about gold. You don't see a lot of gold websites. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, I, I guess mean, this is desktop. Yes, um, this one is obviously just me being very nitpicky, but there's a bit of text there that says we have, we provide clear, simple navigation. I don't believe in calling out these kind of things. Mm. If you do provide clear, simple sure. navigation, it should be obvious should right, right. to say it. And mm -hmm. if you say it and people don't find it clear or simple, they're going to feel patronized or right. distrusting. Mistrusting? Sure. Yeah, yeah, something like that. I agree with you there. I think a lot of the, um, oops, like at the bottom here, these mm. form fields, are, they seem kind of big for desktop, especially the text. So I would try making um, most of the text quite a bit smaller. Like these CTA buttons seem like they're the right size. 
for desktop. Compared but to this ones. Yeah, the rest of everything else seems a little bit big. Um, but I like your the color palette. The color palette definitely is metallic. Great, but yeah. in this particular screen, I don't know what is a CTA and mm. what isn't. Right, because um, these all look like form fields. Yeah. Sign up should be the CTA, I'm assuming. Um, so maybe make this darker. It's Something yeah, else. something else. Like I can see that yeah. the pill is supposed to indicate that those things are um, buttons, but mm -hmm. real people aren't going, oh yeah, this one has a bit more of a rounded corner. Right. So I think oh, I, I didn't even notice that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rectangle versus rounded. I did not see that. Huh. <laughs> Only the designers spent yes. time thinking about these things. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. That was Abu Dala. All right, um, let's see. All right, this is Eritage, day four entry. So I guess this was Friday's. Oh, Got a little right. prototype here, our desktop. Oh, very nice, very nice. Yeah, these interactions nice. are cool. Oh, to that was a very nice anchor, scroll to top, yes. Link. Nice. What are your thoughts? I like the color palette, so I'm mm -hmm. a very big fan of sort of high contrast with very nice pops of color. Yeah. So I like, and I like the sort of interplay of the capital letters and the small, small letters, sentence case mm -hmm. that you have there. In the, yeah. And you know what I said, I love something that says, that has a strap line. So I mm -hmm. come onto the site and I can see very clearly, um, yep. This is something that makes and accepts payments right. around the world. Very clear, very, very nice, I think. Um, Agreed. Oh, and in nice. terms of the visual design as well, I think that the, although I don't know whether the illustration matches mm -hmm. the other side because the illustration is a bit muted compared to the vibrant colors of the rest mm -hmm. of the page. So something to think about. If you're choosing illustrations, you're choosing iconography, that it all needs to blend in with typography and the color. Yeah, I agree. I, I would almost keep the photos that um, you have down. Where is it? Like, just keep yeah. the, the rest of the photos, because sometimes I feel like if you mix illustrations with photos, it it feels a little bit disjointed. I mean, sometimes mm -hmm. it does work, but it, yeah, it just depends. In this case, there is a lot of other things going on. So I think keeping it consistent might help a lot. But I agree yeah. with you with like, I love this contrast between this navy color and this yellow. Mm -hmm. Like normally, I feel like yellow doesn't really work for text because it's just so hard to see. Yeah. Um, usually it's on like a white background. But here that's like, super easy to see, draws your attention right away. Love Indeed. It. A uh, small concern, though, would be that sure. if that um, secondary CTA was sitting mm -hmm. on a white background, it would immediately become unreadable. So yes. I guess there'd have to be a different state for that one. Very true. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Maybe time for just one more. Give this a thumbs up. Awesome. Great job. And OK. Sure. Fantastic. But oh, my goodness, I Ooh. love the color um, yeah. and the use of gradient now purple mm -hmm. is great for financial apps because purple is wealth or royalty or signifies ah. wealth and royalty so there it's something go. like when you look around you'll see that lots of um financial apps will have this vibrant mm -hmm. purple in i feel like i've seen that in a lot in like cryptocurrency apps too mm. the purples so that makes yeah. sense yeah Love this so desktop um okay very nice um yeah. clear text of that oh i love this black and white mm -hmm. um although nice subtle little it, gradient too of the black and gray there yes indeed but the, i would like to see a little bit of because this feels like a completely different brand or page mm -hmm. and just bringing in just a little bit of the purple i think yeah. maybe in the ctas or, or something would have um, tied it all a little bit better. Yeah, even the, the just the submit button down here. Yeah, I think making that the purple would help. Oh, we've got a prototype. Let's take a look at this. Keep your finances under control. Ooh, love that. 
I will say on this page, um, some of these like super light purple elements are a little bit hard to see, like this arrow down here yeah. and this uh, like carousel sort of progress meter right here is a little bit hard to see. I, I know they're like secondary elements, but just something to keep in mind. And some pricing plans. Yeah, it looks very professional. Mm. Nice. Lovely does, work. And really nice. Um, I, I love symmetry, so things are beautifully aligned. Mm. I see it. That's very strong. Yeah. Awesome job. Thank you. I, think I like the typography. Looks... I would love to know what that um, font is, actually. Yeah, it's I Very agree. nice, that bold. Super bold. Lucas, awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. Okay. Um, well, that is our review of some of these daily creative challenges. I'll go ahead and take it back over to you, Jimmy, if you want to, um, we can kind of do a wrap up of what you did today, go through your designs. And if you want to, you can share some of your socials, maybe talk about something you're working on lately. And yeah, I'll hand it over to you. Awesome. Thank you very much. So, um, just a quick recap of what we did. So the first day we looked at more of the conceptual wireframes. I didn't really use color. I didn't really worry about that probably. Um, and then we looked at some of the basic prototyping functionality um, in XD. Then today we've just focused on adding a bit more functionality, improving the UI. Um, although there was a bit of a fail on my attempts to share the joys <laughs> of voice prototyping with you. Never a fail, just <laughs> learning, things that we're learning. <laughs> things that we're learning. Yes. Um, the character of the, or, or the style that I focused on was sort of a fun, but not too fun brand. So bringing in some strong colors. <laughs> not too fun. <laughs> <laughs> my style tends to be sort of clean and mm -hmm. structured and um, lots lot of black and white with just yeah. pops of color. So um, here I'm letting the photography do the speaking um, and using color just as a supplementary thing. Obviously you'll see that I like a little bit of a gradient mm -hmm. um, and I also like a little bit of a shadow. So there's my wee little button over here. You can't see it, but there's, <laughs> there's a there. button with some shadow over there. We looked at um, a bunch of things. I don't even know if I can quickly whiz through them, but let's see how the prototype is. Oh no, I set the right screen as my home. So I'll just go to prototype and set that. And we had a little timer there. We have a hover effect. Would you mind bringing it to like the center? Just cause I'm, my head is right over it. Thanks. <laughs> yes, of course. Perfect. I'm just going to move this. Yeah, let's okay. see what you can Is this okay now? Oh yeah, that's fine. Okay. That's fine. Mm -hmm. um, there was a quick timer, a little hover effect. Um, I have a component with other components in it for my navigation here so that mm -hmm. we can do that and it changes state. So the shop component has changed the state to achieve that effect. Did I push up anything on the screen? I don't think so. Let's go. Oh, I've forgotten what I did, haven't I? <laughs> I don't know if you <laughs> anyway. added that. Yeah, maybe you did. I don't know. It, it's possible true. that I did, but I, you can also <laughs> just use the arrow keys to navigate through your prototype mm -hmm. to get, like me, what it is that you prototyped. Um, <laughs> I would have needed to do a bit more work thinking about the layout. So sometimes mm -hmm. there's a bit of work thinking about the structure of your prototype before mm -hmm. you actually put it together. So working out how to make sure that I got the different images that I wanted in here quite quickly, but I used the repeat grid and dragged in my images and my text mm -hmm. quite nicely over there. We have a little um, overlay here. Okay, so normally nice. I would spend the time to tidy this up and make it work differently. I, oh, I didn't put um, an interaction there. But what I actually have, so let's just go into design. I actually got to wrap this up pretty quickly here. Okay, cool. But you can, you can. Uh, yeah. I was just going to show that mm -hmm. I had some states in here that I was okay. going to prototype, um, but it might take a bit of time to yeah to find the right layer. So 
let's call it a wrap basically <laughs> right. you can find me uh on twitter is my mm-hmm. most popular social media thing um and you can also find me uh on behance.net over there awesome. um i'm woeful at competing challenges at the moment but i will make time so check me out at some point soon awesome thank you so much all right guys that's about all the time that we have left and don't go anywhere because in about five minutes we've got the xd daily creative challenge with howard pinsky so stay tuned for that thank you so much for joining us jimmy and have a great evening guys bye thank you bye